Hi, Paul Thompson here from Spitfire Audio. I'm very excited to bring you the next instalment of the Abbey Road Orchestra line. And these are the cellos, 10 incredible players playing in this beautiful room, Abbey Road Studio One, recorded by the Grammy award-winning engineer Simon Rhodes. <laughs> So before we dive in properly, um, you'll be familiar with a lot of the kind of detail around the library uh, from the first violins walkthrough and information that we've put up. But this is our most detail, complex, feature rich library that we have ever made. Um, the cellos are a perfect match to the first violins, just work straight out the box. They're balanced together to work perfectly. All of your articulations in here, again, are balanced, and this applies to the core and the pro versions. And I'll go into a little bit more detail on the differences there um, as we go through the library. But just to reiterate, this is thousands of hours of programming time, days and days of studio time, uh, days of mixing. It's a huge, huge undertaking, and I'm very excited to have finally the... Uh, the next section of the strings so we can start using them together. Let's jump straight in. So what you're hearing then is the Performance Legato Extended. This is the Pro Performance Legato patch. It's designed to be agile. It's got lots and lots of different things. I'll show you. There are three different attacks. So if I, if I just uh, go back up high and I'm using these controls here. Vibrato you can see there and the, uh, the dynamic control here which is connected to mod wheel. So we've got three different attacks. We've got the very gentle slow attack. We've got the normal attack. And then if you hit the keyboard harder, you get the marcato attack. When it comes to the transitions, the legato transitions within the patch, everything just reacts to what you're playing. So there are lots and lots of different layers to this and lots of new techniques of recording legato that we have developed specifically for this library. So if I play uh, with a kind of medium velocity on the keyboard, I trigger one of the uh, dynamics, depending on which dynamic I'm actually operating in, I trigger one of the dynamics for the normal slowed legato. If I play harder, then I trigger a detached or a bow change legato. And if I play the second note very gently on the keyboard at a lower velocity, I trigger a portamento. And the way that this works is the portamento and the bow change are graded into the edges of that velocity curve. So at the, when you play at the very softest, you trigger a full portamento. But then as you get harder up to 20 in the, in the velocity range, it gradually becomes less portamento and more slurred. So it's very, very useful. You can always go in and tweak any uh, changes, but it's great for playing live as well. Now, what else is happening? We have a new uh, technique which is called legato allegro. And this is a, um, a more kind of flowing and active way of playing when you're doing those kind of um, intervals up to, I think it's around about a sixth, you get this uh, slightly different kind of, um, slightly more agile allegro legato. Now the release has four different settings. So at the very highest setting, I'll demonstrate that, um, you are hearing the longest possible release tail. And as you can hear, that really is taking its time to sound out. Great for slower um, playing. The normal setting is in the kind of third quartile. The second one is slightly tighter and the first one is very tight. Now this tightens everything up in this patch. It's not just the final release. It is actually all of the other mechanics and, and transitions and everything that's going on within the patch. So if I play now at the shortest possible setting. 
you can hear that's very much shorter. Now, where the advantage of this comes is when you're playing very fast pieces. So if I play a, a run, then you get much less blurring of the notes as opposed to if we have, uh, let's say we go up back into the kind of third quartile here, which is the standard, that's the default. And you can hear that everything is slightly more expansive, it's slightly blurrier. Sometimes you might like that. It's a slightly different uh, kind of sound, but very, very useful to have that control there. And when we move on to the short notes, you'll notice that that control is not uh, four discrete settings. It goes in a continuous uh, arc all the way around from the longest release to the shortest. I'll explain that when we get to the shorts. Finally, you'll have noticed <laughs> with the thing that I forgot to mention, which is that you get the short notes in this patch as well. <laughs> And that is also controlled to a certain extent by the velocity that you're playing with, but also by the position of the mod wheel so that you get a better matchup between these short notes and the dynamic of the long notes that, um, that you're playing at the same time. So if we look quickly at the other performance legato um, in here, which is the non-extended one, this is the version that's in the core library. There are a few things that it doesn't have that the extended one has, and those are the attacks. So it has the normal attack. So just that standard attack on each note. It has the slurred legato, but not the detache or the portamento, but it does have the fast run. And as before, all the same settings. So if you want to pull that release back, then you get that tighter sound as well. And this patch also has that legato allegro uh, in there and and the short attacks at the start of the note so you can use that um, it's a very very much a, a full featured performance legato but it just doesn't have those extra extended abilities that the uh, professional version has now let's load up the lyrical legato next this is designed for more kind of flowing lines if we look under the hood here we'll see that the legato offset is set differently that's at 50 percent and the tightness is also at 50 percent now this gives you a slightly longer transition so it's a tiny bit laggier to play so the tightness controlling the attack between uh minus 40 and minus 80 milliseconds and then the legato offset controlling uh, on this lyrical patch it's controlling between minus 100 and its tightest and minus 200 at its slow. So you've got another 100 milliseconds of variation in there. With the performance legato, that's just minus 100 to minus 150 because the focus there is, is on more agile, instant kind of playing. But let's have a quick listen to the effect that that has on the patch. I haven't been up there yet. Wow. Listen to that. Such incredible players. So the lyrical legato focused on that kind of uh, slower melodic moving line, really, really set up and designed for those kind of things. And similarly with the core lyrical legato. So although in the core version you don't have those portamento or bow change transitions um, in the similar way with the performance legato, you still get all of the benefits of that beautiful kind of extended lush uh, sound as you're moving from note to note. So as before, the longs, uh, this is for polyphonic playing. So much fun. So 
this is extended in the sense that it has those alternate attacks. So you've got the three different attacks on here. And again, one of the differences between the Pro and the Core version. Um, but you do have that full control over vibrato and dynamic. And in, in all other respects, it's exactly the same. The flotando, one of my favorite uh, sounds. Let's play it up here. Absolutely beautiful. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. We've got the releases still set to our Q3, but we can extend those if you want a slightly soupier version. Now let's look at our shorts. So we have the four exactly the same as with the first violins um, from the very shortest to the longest. And I will play those for you now. So lots of fun there. And you do have the full dynamic range across these. So if I play that Marcato. You can hear tons and tons of, of, uh, of dynamic range there. And also with these Spicatissimos. And again, you have control over the tightness. So we can really tighten those up almost to a, a ludicrous extent. Or you can have the loosest, uh, still very, very consistent, but the loosest attack. And you can hear there that you get more of the kind of initial agitating the string to get it vibrating. You hear a little bit more of that kind of crunch at the beginning. So it's very, very useful control to have access to there. So going back to staccato. Now, if you uh, dial back the release, you'll hear that that's a continuous dial back. But if I hold the note down, I get the full release. So it's only when I play short that I get that very tight release. And the reason for this, if I show you uh, using the Spicatissimo patch, what I can do for fast moving passages, I could do something like this. And I'm playing all of those, all of the notes apart from the last one, I'm releasing immediately. And that tightens up all of those releases. But then on the last one, I'm holding it down to get the full release of the hall. Again, a really, really useful control there. I'm gonna set that back. With the Marcato, uh, we get that at exactly the same. Uh, and you can hear, the full marcato sounding out. And if we pull that release right down, we get those short uh, releases. And you can also see in here, they are timed. That connection between those two controls gives us the ability to, to really naturally control the length of these marcato sounds that we're playing. Now our uh, tremolos. Again, that fantastic full dynamic range. You'll notice that I haven't touched the CC11 control at all. It's um, it's absolutely beautifully balanced. So the, you're hearing the genuine range of the instrument uh, across this dynamic range. Here we are with the harmonics. Really beautifully played. And then we're into the fun pizzicatos. So 
tons of dynamic range, really fun, cheeky sounding pizzicato from these 10 cellos. Uh, and at the very top of the range, you get that Snap or Bartok pits as well. Colenio for your striking of the string with the wood of the bow. And these are really, really useful for these kind of kind of ticking tonal sound that tells you that, you know, it just kind of keeps things motoring along and putting those in, um, you know, maybe on the first and third beat of, of uh, a 4-4 four, four bar gives you that fabulous kind of tension. It gives you that ability to kind of mount the tension really well. We've got a fantastic selection of trills here. Standard stuff, minor second. And again, those kind of really lovely. Major seconds. And these I really <laughs> love for that. Well, it's exactly that sound. Uh, so nice to use those as um, elements in the chord that you're playing. And these ones as well are very useful. So minor third. So if we play... We get that fantastic sound and we can also use the major third to get a different tonality. All played absolutely beautifully. We've got two different uh, measured trims. First one recorded at 150. And you'll notice that they're all kind of perfectly timed as you go through the dynamic. But you can use them for these kind of great scattery sort of almost John Williams like parts. You get that kind of really, really useful. And if you want to do the faster one, uh, the 180. I'd probably, I'd play that in and then probably tighten it up a little bit on the sequence just to make sure that I was getting exactly the, just the doubles on there. If you watch the memory as I click through all these different articulations, you'll see that it's going up as I click more things. Now we have this great function called eco load, which means that if I click this reset button here, then it will reset to the articulation that is currently highlighted, which is the spiccatissimo. And you'll see that that's dropped down now. Uh, and that is located here in the interface section right at the bottom, enable eco load. And it just means that you only load the articulation that you click on. And that saves a huge amount of memory. So it's really, really useful to know about that. So going back to Spic Artissimo, because um, that's the best way to demonstrate the microphones. I'm not going to go through all of them because I went through them all on the first violins walkthrough. But just to give you a selection of these, we're listening to Mix One at the moment. Which is pretty much the main one that uh, I tend to go for. And then if we listen to the pop main, this is a uh, stereo cardioid mic uh, right in front of the section. Actually, if you hover over any of these names, you'll see uh, an explanation appear in the bottom left. But this sounds great. And that is like a really punchy, in-your-face sound, bang in the middle of the speakers. Um, the pop room similarly placed a uh, matching pair just a bit further out and back to give you a, a kind of filling in a bit more of the room sound, but still with that perspective of putting the section bang in the middle. So that's quite useful if you want to really mess around with that or if you want to move the section around the room or anything like that. We've got one of my favourite signals here, which is these beautiful Abbey Road valve red mics. These give you a bit more definition and a bit bring you a little bit closer to the players. <laughs> And because I'm going to be a bit extra, I'm going to play the performance legato using this mic position as well. Yeah, the idea. Takes you a little bit closer to the action. Um, it's a really useful perspective there. And back to the Spicartissimo for this uh, section leader position, because I just want to show you the absolute magic that Simon has managed to uh, to do with this mic, which is to focus it right in on the leader. Mm -hmm. 
just extraordinary. And if we put the longs up, I can play this. Uh... <laughs> it's extraordinary. It's almost like having a, a solo. Oh, you can hear this section. You can hear the section. So, you know, it will it will sound like there, there are other people in the room playing, but it is so focused in. It's just, I find that just extraordinary um, how it manages to exclude so much of the rest of the signal. Just so much fun to play. What I think I like most about this is that there is a clarity to the sound that I don't think I've heard on any other library. Cellos often sound a little bit woolly in libraries and here you've got a beautiful pristine recording. It's so full of life and you can hear the individual players, you know, these 10 incredible players in London. We've got this amazing sound. The mix is fantastic. The programming is great. It's fun to play. It does everything that you, you know, you could need it to do. Then the other wealth of articulation you know, like the flotando and all of the different short notes and everything like that. So I'm very excited to start hearing what people are doing. Always love hearing user demos. Please keep putting those up. It's great to hear what people are, are using the library for and hearing some wonderful compositions coming out. And I'm really looking forward to hearing the combination of the two, as I said, perfectly balanced libraries. Um, they'll just work straight out of the box for you. So that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. Look forward to seeing you on the next one. Bye bye.